Hello mate and welcome to Let's Code 4, this time it's personal. In this episode we're going to do all kinds of tweaks and adjustments to our code to streamline it and add some new functionality. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, then feel free to hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button, or you can visit the Patreon in the description. So let's jump into this then. So at the moment, we've got all of our buttons appearing on the screen in the contextual menu, which is fine. But what we want to do is make some tweaks to the way that the code is now going to operate so that it makes life easier for us down the line. If you remember, we've got this value in our defaults and defines called selected, which is currently going to be the name of the character we've got selected, which is OK, but it's going to complicate things down the line if we have a string there. So what I'm actually going to do is change it to minus one. It's going to be an integer and that will become apparent or the reason for that will become apparent very shortly. So if we jump over into our character screen file, currently what we've got is a bit of code that's going to create an H box and it's going to lay out all of the characters in our location. Their avatars are going to appear from left to right. And when we click on them currently, we set click type to character and we set selected to the name and we return none, which is fine. But what I want to do is change that so that it actually returns the integer value of the character in the list of characters. So all we need to do to do that is we need to change for Q in NPCs to for I comma Q in enumerate NPCs like that. And now what that will do will also give us a index number inside the list of NPCs. So zero being the first one and so on forwards. And now what we can actually do is we can actually change the set variable selected, and all it's going to do is return I. Nice and simple, no messing around. And all it means is that we're going to be able to address our characters more directly in other functionality. The return none statement doesn't need to change. The reason we have a return none statement there is because we want this clicking of the character, not just to change variables, but to act as an interaction i.e. to move the game on one step so that all of the other things that need to change will change as well. If we don't have the return none in there, then the game will not consider this to be a fully fledged interaction and it will instead not move the game on. So any changes that we need to make in the buttons that are being displayed so on will not happen. The next thing we need to do is to allow ourselves to do a bit of debugging. Now that we're getting integer values back for selected, it's going to be a pain in the bum trying to figure out who we've got selected for ourselves. So what we're going to do is in our classes file, we are going to create a couple of functions. We're going to call this one def and who selected. And we're going to say global NPCs and also selected. Now what we need to do is we're simply going to address these uh, values together. So we're going to say return NPCs, open brackets, selected, which is fine. That's We can use that as a way of saying print who selected, but we can also just say define who is selected Again, opening that like that, and we can say global NPCs, comma, selected, and then we can just say print NPCs I dot name. And in fact, we need to put the dot name here as well. Then we can come back up to our NPC class, like so. And we just checked that it's a lowercase n, it is indeed. In fact, we can get our nice name if we really want to. Nice name. We're going to use nice name on this one because we don't. Uh, we, this one is just to print out on the console. So nice name like that. And that will just print out who we've got selected in our console. In fact, we can test that now. But before that, we need to actually check that we're within bounds. Otherwise, we're going to cause a crash. So what we also have to do is say if selected is not the same or we can say not equal to minus one and the colon there 
and then we can tab this in. And the reason we're doing that is because at the moment we've got selected sets to minus one as a value. So we just copy that, control C, paste that there, tab this in, and then for this one, what we're going to do is say else print no character selected and then we're going to return none and on this one we're also going to say the same but we're going to do else in fact, we're going to, we don't have to do that to this one because it will return none anyway if we don't have this character selected. But all we're doing is we're making sure that our code is robust by adding some debug code there. So saying only if it is not minus one will we actually return a value. Otherwise, things are going to get a little bit complicated. Just changing, just remember to change ice hopes is instead of if there. So just make sure that says if selected, not is selected because that will throw an error as well. So just quickly change that and then we can test our code. Cool, so now we're in our code. I've opened up a debug window. Just type in the command uh, who is selected like so. And then when we run that, you can see it's saying no character selected because currently our integer value is minus one. And it is quite important that we do that. Otherwise things are gonna go a little bit bonkers because referencing a minus number in a list is gonna, well, it's not gonna do what we want it to do. Let's put it that way. The next thing I want to adjust is in our UI button, we currently have this value types and I'm actually gonna change that to singular type. No, I can't actually, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it types, but we will only be putting one value in there. And there's a good reason for that. See, what I want to do is have each action has a type of action is going to be either logical, emotional, physical, or some other kind. And then different characters, depending on their personality type, will respond to that kind of activity in a different way. So where we've come into our defines and defaults, and currently we have UI buttons and we have an empty list, we're actually going to replace that with a string. So talk can be, will actually be a neutral because talking, it can be an emotional thing, but it can also be logical. So it depends on what kind of talking you're doing. So I'm actually going to put this as neutral type. Flirting is obviously going to be a emotional kind of thing. So we'll put in there. Playing, depending on the type of playing that you're talking about, but we're going to call that a physical activity. Fighting is obviously going to be aggressive. Eating, you're going to eat with a person. That again can be a physical, but it can also be another type of thing. So again, I think what we're going to do is come back to that one and I'll leave it as neutral for now. And then working out is also going to be a physical activity. And we can come up with a whole bunch of buttons there dependent on what we're going to do and what i want to do is that if you if you carry out a neutral activity with a character it won't harm your stats with them but it won't have a huge amount of benefit either it'll just be kind of maybe it'll increase their affection towards you by sort of one point rather than five points or something like that so different activities have different effects if you try to do a physical activity with someone who's more of a kind of computer type of person, you know, a, a, a logical type of person, then perhaps their stats will go down instead of up because they won't enjoy the activity. Or rather, they won't enjoy the suggestion of the activity. And of course, there is a possibility that a little bit further down the line, maybe we will replace these with lists again because maybe the flirting has more than one type of uh, reaction you know maybe it's an emotional thing but also maybe it's a um, social thing or something like that you know we can we can adjust that as we need to further down the line um, once we actually start adding the characters and having the interactions with them but for now we're just going to keep it nice and simple and we'll leave it as is another thing that we now have to start thinking about is that we're going to have to have buttons elsewhere on the screen that do other things and so the name ui buttons doesn't necessarily represent what these buttons actually do so what i'm thinking of doing is changing the name of this to interact buttons 
like so. And that is a more descriptive term of what these buttons do because they are the buttons that you use to interact with the characters. So we can just replace all of these in here. Then we have to come into our classes and we have to find the UI buttons definition there. Change that. And then we have to go into our contextual default and change the reference there. And now it will be referencing that list instead. Now the reason I'm doing that now is because we're getting to the stage where we're going to have to start defining other buttons. And that means that we're going to have to have another list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a main UI buttons class or lists rather create that in there. And then in our defaults and defines, we can actually just add a couple of spaces there and we can reference that list like so. We just come in, copy that name, come back into our defaults and defines list. And we're going to pop that on there, add there. And we're just going to add a dummy button just so that the list isn't completely empty. And all we have to do is copy the contents of this and paste it in there. And now we can decide what we're going to actually do. So this one could be a map button. So we can just use nav there. Then the nice name is going to be open map. We don't need a value for the type. So we can actually do nothing there at all. Stat, we can also just have that set to zero because it's not going to affect the stat. And then the function, we can actually leave that blank as well because we don't want it to call a function. All we want this button to do is toggle the navigation menu open and closed. So we really only need that those two properties in the class there. But what I'm actually going to do is where we have types, I'm actually going to input here and I could change this so we could have different sections of our main UI. So we could have, for example, a top bar function in there. And then we can, in our main UI sections, we can say if that value equals top bar, then display it there. If it equals something else, then display it there. So we can still use these properties just in a different way. And this is a really good example of how you can reuse a class. So you can repurpose a class without having to rewrite extra code. And we can even have it so that if this equals a certain value, or we could change and use one of these other values so that if the character is in a specific location, certain functions will come available. For example, if he's in his bedroom, he can sleep. Or if he's in the bathroom, he can have a shower, things like that. So there's an infinite number of ways that we can use these. Just because we've chosen a specific name for these values doesn't mean we have to use them specifically for that function. And the reason we're doing it like this is because it's the simplest way we could create another class that inherits from our UI button class. But all we're doing there is just generating extra code where we don't need it. So we're just going to repurpose this class for this function. And then when we need to create extra buttons along the top of the screen or down the side, and we can adjust the UI as we see fit because we're going to do a video soon where we actually go into Photoshop and we design our UI. And then I will show you how to transpose those values from our Photoshop UI into our RenPy UI. So that about wraps it up for this episode, guys. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned. Until next time, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.